Good afternoon. I think fair trade is fantastic. It is fantastic at making rich Europeans think that they are good. It is fantastic at making money for European companies. Is it fantastic for the farmers in the third world? I find it is almost impossible to get any hard figures from fair trade. A couple of years ago, they claimed that after 25 years of development, they were getting 25 million euros a year into the third world. Maybe it's doubled now, don't it? Now, my job is looking at markets. All markets get less and less and less efficient. All companies do. And every now and again, they bring in people like me to shake up the market and get it working again. The sort of payoff I get in a third world country, look at what the farmer gets and what the exporter gets, and I have halved that cost between farmer and exporter, which means the price to the farmer goes up two, three, four times, and his income goes up from nothing to something. Another time I was looking at an exporter's returns, and I found it was possible immediately to increase the returns by 100 million euros a year. 100 million. Now these are payoffs, that are not just for one year, it takes five, six, seven years before the system becomes inefficient again, but it takes years. So what I'm saying is that from a one month consultancy, I did more for the third world than fair trade claims to have done in 25 years? That's horrifying. Now, the first thing I do, obviously, is what you do. I'm going in and looking at companies, organizations, state marketing boards, who say they're doing wonderful things for the farmer. First question I ask is the question you would ask. What's your buying price? What's your selling price? You ask fair trade, they say, no, we do not record how much money goes to the farmer. We don't keep any figures. Oh. How much extra are people charging for fair tra trade on the market? No, we don't record that. All we do is record how much the packers sell at. So, there's one company who was speaking here, um, was selling in England, the only time I've been able to see exactly how much extra people were paying for fair trade. They were selling ordinary coffee and then fair trade coffee at 15 cents a cup more. So you could see you were paying 15 percent extra and all the consumers thought that 15 cents was going back to the third world. Not a chance pull out your calculator, you will see only 2% of that was going to the third world. The rest went into their pocket, which is frightening. And then you look at the obvious things where you're trying to increase the farmer's money. What's the cost between the farmer and the exporter? Where well, I've halved costs. Fair trade doesn't bother with that. It actually makes things worse. It imposes a very inefficient marketing system. Now, cooperatives. There's been a mass of research over the last 100 years now on cooperatives. They are brilliant, brilliant for capitalist farmers trying to make money because they employ professional people to run their business. They are pretty dreadful for small subsistence farmers. And the research is they are absolutely appalling if there is a political or social element. So most countries I go in, I am told you must not use the word cooperative because farmers hate them. 
Another cost, certification. Fair trade cooperatives complain the bureaucracy this means, all the forms they've got to fill in, everything they've got to do, is so expensive, they haven't got any money to pass on to the farmers. And then we come to the nasty thing, whenever you're giving away money, they haven't got market forces keeping you honest. It's very tempting to steal it. Go to Brussels, see the European community, and all their subsidies, and you know an awful lot is stolen. Think if a buyer goes along, if I go along to a cooperative in Africa, and I say, I'd like to buy your coffee, fair trade coffee, um, but I'll only pay you half the premium, the rest goes in my pocket. The buyer has to say, yes, what can he do? As a seller, otherwise he knows the buyer goes somewhere else. You've all seen this happen in markets, and God knows it happens a lot when people are dealing with third world exporters. We've told how much hits the third world. We have no idea how much actually goes down to the farmer, if anything. I guess not very much. But actually, surprisingly, this is a good thing. If fair trade worked like it's meant to, what they have is they've got their friends, the fair trade farmers, mostly in very rich countries, Mexico, Costa Rica. When I say rich, these have 70 times the GDP of a country like Sierra Leone. By African standards, they are filthy rich. And they pay these farmers more. And we're told, they told them how to increase their yield. What's the result? You pay farmers more, they produce more. And we know with coffee, of all markets, a 1% increase in production means 4 or 5% fall in world price. With coffee, we know this. So because you pay your friends in rich countries extra money, the people in poor countries like Sierra Leone get very low coffee price. Now, in the third world generally, one in three children dies of hunger and disease before they are five. That's in the good times. When the coffee price falls, that's bad times. One in two children die. So if you were born in Sierra Leone, you lot would have died before you were five. Or you lot. And the other lot, the top three rows, would have died after their five. So not a lot of them live. So if you let your intervention, so-called ethical trading, distort the market, you are going to kill people. You are going to kill an awful lot of people. So, as he said, we have these beautiful pictures of a smiling-faced peasant in Mexico. Okay, so the photographer's waving a $10 bill there. That's not evidence. They do not give us the picture of Mr. and Mrs. Kamara in Sierra Leone burying their baby daughter who's died of hunger because the coffee prices have fallen. And say, do we really want this kind of so-called ethical marketing or do we want something that really, really helps the poorest of the poor? Over to you. Thank you.